right, and we're on. I want to talk a little bit more about the hamstrings and why not to stretch them in many people. People oftentimes complain of hamstring tightness. We did another video to talk about a possible solution about loosening up the hip flexors, loosening up the calves to help the realignment of the pelvis and the ankle to take strain off of the hamstring. Let's talk a little bit more deeply about what might be happening. Many times when people come in and we do their assessments on them, excuse me as I step up onto this board here, when they go to squat or move, we see this arch in the low back, which means that their pelvis is tilted anterior. If someone has a tilt in the pelvis, an anterior pelvic tilt, then that's going to put the, the hamstring muscles on stretch. The hamstrings as a group are going to run from different parts of the pelvis down to around the knee joint. So if someone has that arch in the low back or that anterior pelvic tilt, it means that the hamstring muscles are actually being pulled apart. So if you take a muscle, so say this is my knee and say that this is my pelvis, and I pull them apart by going into that anterior pelvic tilt or that low back arching that we watched in the overhead squat assessment, that muscle is actually being pulled apart further. So when people try to get relief by stretching that muscle even further, what do you think is going to happen if you continue to stretch it and stretch it and stretch it? The muscle is physically or mechanically elongated. It does not need to be any longer. There are some receptors within the muscle that feel themselves being stretched. So what they do is they pull back the other way. There's some neurological tension. So mechanically being pulled apart, neurologically the muscle is trying to shorten. That's the muscle spindle fiber. And so static stretching for a lengthened hamstring is not something that we want to do. We want to reset the alignment of the position of the pelvis to take mechanical pressure off of the hamstring. That's why looking at the ankle and the hip are very important parts of hamstring tension or tightness. Because people will stretch the hamstring and then strain it or it, injure it, stretch the hamstring, strain it or injure it. It drives me nuts when I watch NBA games. You see these six foot nine power forwards, and you've got someone on the court jamming their knee up to their nose. Their low back is arching, their pelvis is coming up in the air. Does their hamstring need to be stretched anymore? Probably not. Their hamstrings probably feel tight because they have a rotation in their pelvis putting that mechanical stretch on that hamstring. And then you have to listen to so-and-so being out for another week or so-and-so being out for another month. When if you really just looked at the ankle and the hip, you'd probably have a better idea what was going on. And I know it could be the shoulder, I know it could be the neck and the low back, but we're just talking in generalities here. So hamstring stretching. Static stretching for the hamstring is okay when it's warranted based off of a movement assessment, range of motion assessment. So if someone's just complaining of tension or chronic hamstring strains, see if they have that arch in the low back. See if they have an anterior pelvic tilt. If that is the case, then worry about the tilt for the position of the pelvis, not necessarily stretching or lengthening the muscle that feels tight. Remember, tension is just a symptom, and what we're talking about is alignment and function.